Like every generation before them, millennials have their own collective persona, which has been shaped by their location in history. Boomers came of age during the consciousness revolution of the late 1960s and 70s, the Woodstock era of idealism and protest. Xers were the young children of this period, when adults were often off finding themselves and no one was paying much attention to kids. But the first millennials were born in the early 1980s when the consciousness revolution was over and done with. To them, Woodstock is just a question on their history exam. All the social and family experimentation was ebbing and there was a growing sense that kids needed more structure and protection. The popular culture began stigmatizing hands-off parenting styles and recasting babies as special. Attitudes toward having and raising children became much more positive. Baby on board signs began to appear on car windows. Hollywood replaced cinematic child devils with adorable children who made adults into better people. Surveys showed parents saying their kids were more wanted. And thanks to the Lamaze movement, fathers began showing up at their children's birth. In the late 1970s, only 20% of dads were present at their children's birth. By the late 1980s, the share was 65%. Today, it's around 80%. Child abuse and child safety became hot topics through the 1980s, and rates of divorce, abortion, and violence against children fell steadily. Suddenly, Child protection gadgets in the home exploded into a billion dollar industry. And then we got child safety seats, V-chips, nanny cams, and amber alerts. As millennials got older, especially in the 1990s, the protections aged with them. We got metal detectors in the high schools, carding at the movies, and safety key cards in colleges. Meanwhile, the media honed in on millennials' academic achievement. The Goals 2000 movement, targeting first-wave millennials born in 1982, demanded improved student behavior and achievement from the high school class of 2000. Educators spoke of standards, cooperative learning, and no child left behind. By the mid-1990s, politicians were defining adult issues from tax cuts and internet access in terms of their effects on kids and teens. Boomers fired up culture wars focusing on family values that put millennial kids at the very center of the national debate. Pop culture continued to focus on millennials as they aged, with new images of teens shuttled to scheduled activities by devoted soccer moms. And within families, parents continued to spend ever more time with their children. Given all this adult attention, it's no wonder that millennials have developed a sense of specialness to themselves, to their parents, and to the wider community. And as we would expect, this location in history has had a major impact on millennials' collective personality and generational behavior. In fact, they've been reversing many of the youth trends pioneered by boomers and Xers. Let me offer one important example. By almost every measure, we've seen a dramatic decline in personal risk-taking by youth. Since millennials began entering their teen years in the mid-1990s, serious violent crime among teens has fallen by 75%, probably the swiftest and most dramatic decline in youth violence in American history. Starting around the same time, rates of teen pregnancy and abortion have been falling and have declined by 50% overall. Teen alcohol and smoking rates in grades 8, 10, and 12 also started falling and are now at historic lows. But the drop in youth risk-taking is broader than that. It also shows up in everyday behavior. We're seeing dramatic declines in a long list of CDC youth risk surveillance indicators, everything from not wearing a seatbelt to carrying a weapon at school to drinking and driving to sexual activity among teens. These declines in risk-taking are just one part of the millennial transformation. Next, we'll take a look at the seven core traits millennials have developed thanks to their location and history. These seven traits are the key to this generation's behavior and priorities in the workplace.